All right, guys, what we're looking at here is a couple of things. These are essential questions for the new chapter. So we're going to take a look at some of these and try to make this fairly quick, okay? Um, a lot of the vocabulary uh, we have kind of referenced and you might be familiar with. Especially if some of you have um, wells around your house, you may notice that the, the water table and the aquifer and stuff like that are quite common. Now, the hydrosphere is what we call the, um, excuse me, the hydrosphere is what we call our, our zone of water or every bit of water on the earth is called the hydrosphere. Uh, one of our number one resources that we have to protect is our fresh water, which is called our drinking water. And most of it, and not all of it, about 70% of it's held in the glaciers and such. Right, so those are some, some basic facts. Um, that we need. Uh, got a couple of things here about the normal water cycle, which we should know. Um, nothing super new. You know, um, we start out with a primary seawater. It goes up in the atmosphere. We form clouds. And then, and, and after we form clouds, if we get enough moisture in there, we get precipitation, we bring it back down to the earth. Now, the most important part we want is infiltration. That's when it trickles into the ground and is absorbed, and then we get something called groundwater. Now, this is what we would have done in that previous lab if we'd have got a chance. Now, um, our crust, oh, we always think of the crust as a solid, but it's made up of several different layers that we've learned before. And the biggest thing is, is the small openings called the pore spaces. That's really going to make an effect on what we're talking about. And uh, we really need to try to figure out what we can do with that. We Now, this, this, this groundwater is stored in those spaces that happen to become... Um, separated apart. And so I attached uh, in this section, I've attached uh, the PDF document of the chapter, so I snipped it together for you so you can take a look at it. Now, when we see the porosity, we were going to go into this in this previous chapter, and this, what we're talking about is the space. So all of, all of the, all the amount of space that we have depends on the size and the variety of the particles and the material. So that's going to be kind of important to us, okay? Whether or not it's sorted, unsorted, and such. Now, the zone of saturation is where we have the material that will hold the water. That's where the empty spaces are that are, that are able to allow the water to collect and move. Now, the upper boundary of the zone of saturation is called the water table in the zone of aeration, which is above the water table. And we notice that that's the, the damp part. Um, and we normally see they are not saturated with water. Air has a tendency to migrate down into that region. Sorry. Now, water in the zone of saturation, the zone of aeration can be classified as either Gravitational water or capillary water. Gravitational water trickles down because it's traveling towards the center of the earth due to the power of gravity. Capillary is like a paper towel. Um, sit down, if you touch the end of a paper towel in something, it'll draw the water to, from one end to the other. That's capillary action. Okay? And, and, and that's one of the big differences that we see. Now, the depth of the water table really depends on where you live. Um, our water table will fluctuate. We've had a few years of, of dry summers around here where we've actually had quite a few of our um, teachers uh, and students' wells go dry because they've got so dry during the summer. Um, permeability. One of the things we got to focus on is the ability for water to um, move. Now, an aquifer is a contained. An aquifer is a layer of subsurface materials that's saturated with water. It's basically just a giant lake 
that happens to form inside porous material. And it's normally sandwiched between two layers that are what we consider to be uh, impermeable. They'll call them aquacludes. The impermeable layer is called an aquaclude. That's a barrier that keeps the water where we need it. Um, we normally will have a it will have a tendency to flow, and we've we've learned ways of trying to keep keep track of things and everything else. So it's it's pretty straightforward. We we will do a drop test. We will uh, drop a substance in one region. And we'll watch it trickle, 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 trickle through the aquifer. And then a well 10 miles away, it'll be pumped up out. Now, groundwater tends to discharge at the surface where an aquifer and an aquaclude are in contact. In other words, um, we get something, we get a break, we get a spring. Um, Several of my relatives' properties and stuff, they'll you'll you'll walk around and you'll see just this random pipe jammed back in the side of a hillside and water trickling out of it. They tap to spring. Uh, it's all kinds of different places that we can see where the spring will pop up. And springs can be caused for a whole bunch of different reasons. Now we got the ones out, out west at uh, Yellowstone where we get a hot springs. These are caused by thermal thermal vents and such heating the water layer and making it bubble up and forcing it up. So that geyser, we have the area down here that's heated. And as it goes up, we deal with that pushing up and erupting out of the top of the surface. So a geyser is one of the things of which we deal with. So that's the general overview very very quickly of this chapter okay so when we think about this we need to try to remember what we're doing okay guys um, I'm going to post uh, a few things to go along with this